What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one then, we're gonna be going through five different things you need to be doing before you actually start dropshipping. We're gonna be covering the kind of topics you don't really hear many people talking about, such as whether you need to set up a new company or not, and the different taxes and kind of financial things behind a dropshipping business. I feel like, or certainly a lot of people I talk to on Instagram, because dropshipping is pretty much one of the easiest businesses you can start. If you know what you're doing, like within the space of two to three hours, you can have a Shopify store created, you can have products on that store, and you can be running Facebook ads to sell those products. So a lot of people jump into dropshipping trying to make some money really quickly, but they don't kind of take care of the fundamentals or the kind of natural things that come to mind that you should that you actually need to be doing before you actually start dropshipping. And by avoiding these things, then at some point later on down the road, you're gonna come across some problems, some headaches that are gonna end up costing you some money and some time. So before we jump into it, I just want to quickly say that I do read every single comment. So if there is a question you want to ask me, feel free, make sure you post it down below. I will read it and I will answer it. And of course, if you enjoy the video please do make sure you let me know by hitting that like button and finally my aim in 2020 actually on my youtube channel is to upload four videos every single week so if you do want regular consistent content on this sort of stuff um, just make sure you hit that subscribe button too so that being said then let's jump into point number one which is setting up a company slash a separate bank account one of the most common questions i get asked is do i need to set up a limited company do i need to be a sole trader what do i need to do so what i recommend then in the beginning is when you're getting started is at the very minimum at least set up a separate bank account um, just for accounting reasons just to kind of keep your personal finances separated to your company or to your business and then depending on your own personal circumstances will depend on whether you need to set up a limited business and the reason for this then is pretty much tax so financial reasons if you don't set up a company depending on what your circumstances are the number one is you may end up paying too much tax so to give you an example then if we have a look at this image here the top one these are the different tax taxable branded incomes for the UK whilst I'm recording this video. So these are accurate today. The basic rate, so let's say for example, you're earning 25 grand a year, which is the average wage in the UK, you would be in this basic rate here. You'd get 12 and a half grand completely tax-free and then anything between 12 and a half grand and 50 grand, you would pay 20% on. So let's say you're earning 25 grand a year, you start a dropshipping business and that dropshipping business makes 50 grand. What would happen if you wasn't set up as a limited company, you were running as a sole trader, then essentially what would happen is that that 50 grand profit you make from your dropshipping business the first 25 grand of that you would pay 25 you would pay 20 percent sorry because you've already got your previous 25 grand from your from your job and then the next 25 grand would be in this higher rate which you'd pay 40 percent on so you'd pay 25 grand at 20 percent 25 grand at 40 percent which probably roughly averages out at about 30 percent overall whereas if you separated yourself from the limited company and registered as a limited company corporation tax as a according to this screenshot here, um, it's just a flat 19%. So instead of paying 30% on that 50 grand, you would only pay 19%. Plus there's tons of other benefits through having a different um, company. So for example, you could put certain expenses through your business like Wi-Fi, um, different kind of accessories for your office or whatever it is. There's just so many different kind of other ways in which you can put things through your business as an expense. The second reason then, which is the main reason why all businesses I start, I will set up as a limited company from day one with a separate business bank account is because it protects any assets that you personally own. So essentially what that means then is that when you create a limited company, that becomes a separate financial entity, if that's the right word, to yourself. So what that means then is if you're running as a sole trader and for whatever reason you get sued or you become liable for a payment of let's say 200,000 pounds, if you don't have the cash or other means to pay that and you have a mortgage that your wife and kids are living in that house that, that has a mortgage on it, um, then essentially that house can potentially be at risk for footing the bill for that payment. Whereas if you set up your dropshipping business through a limited company, it's a separate entity, a separate financial entity to yourself. So if it then becomes liable for that 200 grand payment for whatever reason, then essentially your personal assets are protected. And because I own a few different properties, then that is the main specific reason why I set everything up from the beginning in a separate limited company. The third and final point then, which is just straightforward, is it makes accounting so much easier. Trust me, take from me, it was the biggest mistake I made in the beginning. I ran my dropshipping business from my personal bank account. And basically what I did when it started to make some decent money, and I knew this was gonna be a long-term thing, I registered it as a limited bank, um, as a limited business, and then I had to backdate everything from my own personal accounts and the headaches, the hours, just 
it was an absolutely just awful job of having to do of literally go through every single transaction in my personal bank account. So I'd have AliExpress, Facebook, AliExpress, 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 and it would just be random ones like fuel or some sort of restaurant or an electricity bill that just weren't relevant to my business. So it just took hours and hours. So to avoid that and make it easier to kind of keep track of whether you're actually making money or not, I just before you do anything, just make sure you set up a separate bank account. So my advice then to kind of summarize these points is number one, speak to an accountant. They will, within a space of a few minutes, they'll ask you a couple of questions and then they'll be able to give you a definite answer of what the most tax and financially efficient thing is to do for you. Everything is gonna be personal to your current circumstances. And then number two is just have a separate bank account from day one. This will also make budgeting so much easier. If you just keep putting more and more money into your business, um, from your personal account. It'll be difficult to keep track of how much money you've actually spent. Whereas if you have a separate bank account and you start off with say a thousand pounds, then it's quite clear and in terms of budgeting, it's just a whole lot easier. So um, yeah, at the very minimum then, make sure you set up a, bank, a separate bank account. Moving on to point number two then, this is a biggie as well. There's a few different kind of life hacks you can do to make the most of the money you're spending. And one of those ways then is to have a rewards credit card for order fulfillment and Facebook ad costs. Because these are two kind of, um, direct costs of your business that you won't be able to avoid spending, then you might as well get something back for that money that you're spending. Now, before getting to this one very quick warning, I just want to say is be responsible with your spending. If you're not very good at financially planning and sticking, if you just basically get carried away and as soon as you get a credit card, you're going to go and go out and buy loads of crazy things, then don't do this. But if you're sensible enough to discipline yourself um, and spending your money wisely, then you can get some pretty good bonuses back for the money you spend. So for an example, then these are what these screenshots are relevant to. If I just show you my British Airways account, you can see that I've got 50,000 Avios points. I can just refresh that very quickly too, so you can see it's legit. Um, and Avios points, essentially what they are is when I spend money on my MasterCard or, Am or Amex, my American Express card, I get Avios points. Every single pound I spend, I'll get at least one Avios back. And then with these Avios points, I can use them for certain perks. One of those perks, for example, is plane flights. So to give you an example then of how much money I can save, then this is an example flight. So one way London to Los Angeles, Friday the 17th of Jan 2020. So this is in a few days time. If I was to take the 1040 flight um, and fly premium economy, economy, it's gonna cost me 32,500 Avios, which you've seen I have, plus 340 pounds. Now, if I was going to book that flight and pay for absolutely everything in cash for the exact same flight, so London to LAX in Los Angeles, 1040 flight, premium economy, economy I can't say that word today, um, it's gonna cost me 2,621 pounds. So as you can see, I'm saving over two grand simply by paying for my Facebook ad costs and my order fulfillment using a certain credit card. And then to kind of summarize, another reason and why you could have a credit card or why it's beneficial again another common question i get is that people will start a drop shipping business and they won't have the money to pay for order fulfillment so they'll have to wait for that payout from shopify or stripe or whoever they're using which can sometimes take a week so it's a week on top of drop shipping delivery times which is not a good thing so by having a credit card you can make sure you fulfill the orders the same day and um, which in return is going to be faster order processing faster delivery times which in return is going to be less refunds and complete complaints from customers. Moving on to point number three then, we have increased professionalism of your store. So basically, increase how trustworthy your store comes across. As a new business, the number one thing that's gonna stop somebody from spending their money with you is whether they trust you or not, to hand over their credit card details, to hand over their PayPal details, to hand over their money. So make sure that your store is really professional and more professional and trustworthy than the next one, then you have the best chance of converting that customer. Less than 1% of all the Shopify stores I've ever ever looked at have the following three things which in my eyes any decent and creditable business should have these things number one is an email address to match the domain so for example if your website is called bluecrate.com you should have an email address that is sales at bluecrate.com or info at bluecrate.com it should match because it's professional number two is a contact telephone number again something that in my mind should just always be included people want to know they can ring somebody and sort out a problem if they have one now if you're scared or you don't want customers ringing your personal phone and you don't want to talk to customers it's fine i'm going to show you a workaround in a second number three again is a business address people want to know that you're 
you're a legitimate business with a physical address, again, so they can contact you or get hold of you if they need to. So to give you an example, then this screenshot here, it's not just a random office building. This is where some of my stores were registered with, a, it's called a virtual office. So if anybody ever Googled my address, this is what they would see. It would look so much more professional than just a random street address um, and a picture of your house or God knows what address. Some, some addresses, honestly, that I've seen people give their customers and they just have just fake addresses, basically, and it's just not a good idea. So the cost of these then, number one, an email address to match your domain is gonna cost you three pounds per month per email, and that is with a G Suite account. I use it for all of my accounts and it lets you use a custom domain for your email address. Number two, a contact telephone number is going to, on roughly, it's going to, well, basically, there's two ways in which you can pay for this. Number one is approximately £20 per month, which gets you unlimited calls, or you can pay £1 per call. And you can use a website called takemycalls.co.uk. Basically, what this does is it's an answering phone service for you. So you don't actually have to directly speak to your customers. They will take the information from your customer, take the question, the query, and then pass it on to you so you can then respond to them, however you decide to. Number three, a business address. You can go with Rural Mail and get a PO box. This is going to cost you the cheapest option is £26.25 per month. Or you can get a virtual office, which is what I do, um, which is approximately £30 per month. Now, all three of these things, I would say they're optional in the beginning, but they will help your business. They will help your conversion rate. So if you've got a decent budget to play with, then I recommend getting all three of these things. Why, like I mentioned in the intro to this point, is that it increases the trustworthiness of your store and this is the number one factor of why customers will not buy from you. If they don't trust you, there's no chance in hell they're going to spend money with you. Moving on to point number four then, which is build social proof of pages and posts. So if you're advertising on a social media platform, then social proof is absolutely everything. If you have zero engagements, zero likes, zero views, zero comments, etc., again, you don't come across as trustworthy. And as I've already mentioned, trustworthiness is like the number one factor of whether people will decide to spend their money with you. If you can't get over that barrier of people trusting you, there's no way in hell you're going to be successful. It's just a fact. So how do you actually fix this then? Number one is you can run page-like campaigns. You can get some pretty decent results for quite cheap. As you can see here, this is like a screenshot um, from my ad manager account. You can see that a cost per engagement is gonna cost you about two pence, depending on what kind of campaign you're running. In terms of page likes, then you're looking at about 10 pence per page like. So if you can dedicate, say, 50 pounds to that, if I've done my maths correctly, then that's 500 page likes. So you don't have to spend that much money to increase your social proof quite dramatically. Number two is you can run post engagement campaigns. Again, these are specific campaigns you can run, and you can go really broad on the audience here because it doesn't matter who likes it. Essentially, all people care about when they see your ad is how many people People have engaged how many people have commented it doesn't really matter who it is plus the broader you go the cheaper results you're going to get number three this is kind of like a way of compounding the engagement on your ads so just make sure that you run ads to the same posts on your page make sure you use the same post id that way all the engagement is going to compound onto that one post and it's going to build up faster essentially so make sure then that you don't try and compound the engagement onto one ad that's a poor ad that's never going to perform very well in the beginning then what i recommend doing is testing multiple creative in the beginning and then the one that performs the best then start to compound all your engagement onto that one ad creative. And then number four finally is regular posting on pages. For example then if your last post on Facebook was nine months ago and it's you changing your cover photo, when somebody comes onto your page and that's what they see, you don't come across as very active or very current so people might start to doubt whether you're still in business and again they won't trust you. It all comes down to trustworthiness. Let's give you an example then here's like a quick study I found online of the different reasons of what makes people trust you versus not trusting you. The biggest thing was customer reviews. It goes without saying. It's a fact, by the way, that people follow people. So if the more reviews and more engagement you have, then basically, then the better. Number two is easy to contact the company, which we've already spoken about. Number three is secure browsing. So it says there in brackets, the presence of HTTPS with Shopify, then you'll automatically have that. Number four is a clean website design, layout and navigation. And number five is accurate accurate and up-to-date content. So just make sure you post regular content um, every single day and it's going to be beneficial. To give you another example as well is these two ads here. Again, screenshots from certain ads I found on Facebook and they're for the exactly the same product except this one here at the bottom has 10,000 comments and 43,000 
um, reactions and this one here has three as you can see if I could just move this out of the way this one only has three so if somebody sees this bottom one versus the top one which one are they going to trust more and actually buy through it's going to be this one here because it has significantly more engagement and comes across as more trustworthy moving on to the fifth and final point then which is keep things simple in the beginning so this is quite a big and important one to be honest the amount of people I talk to on Instagram beginners and they just try and do the most complex and ridiculous things Things. like they try and run before they can walk and they're just setting themselves up for failure it's like before you learn to ride a bike you wouldn't try and learn to ride a motorbike it just wouldn't make sense it's like it's a bike with an engine you'd start with a normal push bike that you pedal and then you progress onto a motorbike you wouldn't just go straight to a motorbike it's kind of like a metaphor that just come to my head i don't know whether it really makes sense but what i'm trying to say then is just keep things simple in the beginning don't over complicate it give yourself the best chance of success by keeping things simple and avoiding the following so here's just kind of like a few general tips um, to make sure you're on the right path so things to avoid then Number one is dangerous, fake, consumable, or trademarked products. All of these will either get held up at customs and will never get into the country you're shipping to, or they'll end up with you getting your Facebook ad account banned, your Shopify store banned, your payment provider banned, and you'll fail before you've even started. Number two is complex store design. People, I've seen people with bright pink backgrounds or black backgrounds or yellow backgrounds and white fonts and it's just difficult to read it's off putting just stick to the basics a white background black test a serif or sans serif font and that's going to put you in good stead we saw in the previous point in this study that one of the biggest reasons that puts people off by not trusting you um, was where is it clean website design layout and navigation so just make sure you stick to the basics get some feedback on your store and make sure it looks professional number three is selling globally in the beginning there's no need to try and target the whole world stick to one country at a time even today I still focus on the UK when I'm testing a new product if I can sell a product well and profitably in the UK only then will I start to scale out into into bigger countries. Different markets will react to different products in a different way. So if you try and take on the whole world all in one go, then it's gonna be really difficult to find something that sticks and something that does well. So, so focus on one country at a time then to give yourself the best chance and success. Number four is copying content. The amount of people I see that copy content from other dropshipping stores, other Facebook pages, um, especially products product images with models then. Now, if they're Asian models from AliExpress, then you might get away with it because it's probably supplier content. Make sure you always check by the way. But if you go into Instagram and find some influencer and take content from their page, then again, it's gonna end up with you receiving complaints. It's gonna end up with Facebook getting in contact with you and putting a strike against your account. It's gonna end up maybe even with your ad account getting banned there and then, or perhaps your company or you even getting sued. So just produce your own content, buy the product as a sample so you can test it yourself, make sure it's decent quality, and take your own pictures or videos or whatever you wanna do with it. And with that being said then guys, there's one more thing to do, and that is to say thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate everybody who watches these videos, by the way, it's still crazy to think that I've got over 10,000 subscribers on my channel. Um, so thanks very much. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please do make sure you hit that like button. I've said it in the intro, but if there is a question you want to ask me, I read every single comment. It might take me a couple of days, to be honest, to get back to you, but I will read it. I will answer it. Um, and if you want more content then on Shopify, on Facebook ads, um, off of YouTube, hence Instagram, and then head over. That's my username. Go over there, follow me. Um, check out my free ebooks too in the description below. There's five different ones. Um, people, I've had some really good feedback on them as well, actually. So make sure you check them out. 100% free, won't cost you any money. And then finally, if you want like a proven step-by-step -step program that includes my full support, and then you can check out my Ecom Academy too. Again, there will be a link in the video description below. Finally then, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.